Hey guys! Just a quick note to our listeners, this episode was recorded in January of 2020, pre-quarantine. We hope you enjoy! Interior, West Hollywood apartment night. Wobbling, chain clanking. The dusty old ceiling fan whips around at top speed. James, 25, in tattered old tidy whities cross-legged on the hardwood floor, breathes fast and hard, otherwise still in stoic. The dark circles under his eyes are that of a man on the brink of defeat. A bead of sweat runs down his forehead. Bloodshot eyes, he holds his gaze on a landline rotary phone, positioned directly in front of him. Time passes. Through the window, the sun sets, then also rises. Sets and rises, then again. His gaze has not broken, nor has the phone rang. Day is turned into weeks, weeks, months. Finally, in a sudden rage, James smashes the phone into pieces and begins to sob on the floor. Then, a glimmer from his desk catches his tear-soaked eye. A pen. The broken man pulls himself together and scrambles for the pen, then for a piece of paper. Frantically, he writes, Screenplay by James Liddell. Black. The end. I'm Pamela Portnoy. I'm Alexa Marie Anderson. And And no one's okay. (laughs) Wow. You did it. That was not written by Alexa or I. No. That was written by James, and we wanted him to read it, but he did not want to read it himself. That was written by Pam. She's just not proud of it. No, it was definitely you. And this is the perfect opportunity to welcome our first guest ever on our show, ever. I have a lot of questions about that story, but let's introduce him first. You did a wonderful we... job reading it. <laughs> Thank you. I was nervous. You made it really come to life. Do you think so? You Are you being sarcastic? It might have been the words. I don't know. <sighs> I don't know. I think it was a combination of the words with the acting, and it really painted a picture for everybody. We make a good team. Done. So who are who is he? Who is he? That's a great question. James is from Canton, Michigan. Is that how you say it? Yeah, Canton? I think so. Okay. You think so? Oh, yeah, I hope so. We talk funny. So oh, okay. We would say Canton, but other people would say like Canton. Oh. Okay. What was the difference between I, the I... two? I'm sorry. I totally missed <laughs> you it. You don't really have an ear for subtlety, do you, Pam? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I did a beautiful you didn't job hear reading that story. You didn't hear the difference between that? <laughs> Anywho, he's been out in Los Angeles for seven years. He has acted, written, and produced several projects. His film, Two Ways to Go West, has just acquired distribution with global digital releasing and is set to be released this year. That's right. That's pretty Congratulations. Awesome. Congrats. Thank you. That's very exciting. Yeah, at this point, not so much exciting. What what is it instead of exciting? Um, as you like remove a your jacket in case our I'm audience is sweating didn't. now. <laughs> no, it's like more of like all right, thank the Lord, it's over with. Was it that challenging? Was it that hard? No, it just took way longer than I expected. How long did it take? Um, at this point, it's been I think three and a half years since I started writing it. Badass. Wow. That is a long time. Yeah. So it's, we we shot three years ago and we have been waiting for it to be released for a long time now. What made you want to get started on this project? Um, well, that brings us full circle to the beautiful story you just told. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. He yeah. didn't do it on accident. So, uh, Alexa, you had some questions about the tale. Yes. I just didn't know where, what, what point in time that was coming from, so I would love to know. So this is a great starting point. That just is... Yeah, so, um, you know, got tired of waiting for the phone to ring. Yeah. So I had an opportunity to get something made. I started writing something. That opportunity fell through, and then I kind of just saw it through on my own. That's awesome. A lot of people don't have the um, patience or discipline to create something on their own when they're constantly being disappointed by the inevitable rejections, so. Yeah, um, you know, you start to get used to the rejection and then eventually you kind of forecast what that's headed to. And I forecast that it wasn't really heading to anything, so I was time to do something myself, you know? Absolutely. Um, So yeah, it was about three and a half years ago now. We shot, I wrote it in three, four months. Um... We shot 
in 10 days as a feature film, editing for probably close to a year with sound and everything, you know, with no budget. It was like pulling favors and pulling teeth at the same time. And then shopped around for a distributor, linked up with a company that the director works with all the time, and that was it. Now we're waiting for a release date. That's really oh, exciting. So um, what's, your, what's your process like writing? Like when do you – when is your time to sit down and write? Do you like, like schedule out time or do you just do it when you feel moved to do? I've gone through a lot of different phases mm-hmm. with it. And usually it has to be like that's my job. Yeah. Like it's always easy when I have like – or anybody has like an opportunity or an opening. It's like great. There's an object. Let me finish this thing and get something made. But if that doesn't exist and you're just starting from scratch – Really, for me, I have to just write every day. Yeah. It takes Not, a lot of discipline, I feel like, to do something like that. That's the main thing is, like, write every day. Don't be precious about it. Just do the damn work. Um, so when I stop trying to write something good and just write something, then that's mm-hmm. the only time I can get anything done. Like when you stop judging it so much, you just kind of let, it, yeah, let because, it happen. Yeah, if you, it's like I'm going to set out to make something great and then I'm going to cast myself in it and then I'm going to win an award and it's going to be great <laughs> and then you're like all right first great word <sighs> yeah it's too much pressure too much pressure and then at that I just, point yeah. I just throw in the towel and go do something else so yeah I, I start with I'm going to write something awful it's not going to be good nobody's ever going to read it I'm going to handwrite it so that if anybody tried to read it, they would fail miserably. Do you have bad handwriting? And yeah. I have terrible handwriting as well. So I'm like, and I then I go back to rewrite it and I, I can't read it either. So then oh, I got to start from scratch. Oh. Um, but yeah, it's the process for me starts with I'm going to write something bad and then just get to work. So That's tell an interesting us, concept. Tell us a little bit about your uh, plot line in this particular film so that people know what to look out for when it does come out. Oh, in two ways. Um, well, it's thematically it's a film about addiction. Um, so it's three high school friends who reunite in Vegas for a bachelor party. Uh, the whole film, for the most part, takes place in a hotel. And that was kind of from the... From the initial idea was like, what can we shoot for nothing with a couple of our actor friends yeah, and get it done? So I was like, all right, one location. And Mm -hmm. that's kind of how it started. So most of the film takes place in a hotel room. And it's kind of all of their demons come out throughout the course of the night as they reunite. That's awesome. That's kind of like the the one thing that everyone does think of to keep budget low is like I want to keep it at the most minimal amount of locations yeah that's really cool that you guys are really able to do that yeah and then you find ways to get creative and open up the scope a little bit so you know we have some b-roll that we shot in Vegas we took a drone out there and got some really beautiful shots of the desert and it just just things like that just up the production value so much that you can really make something look like nothing now. I was lucky enough to take a look at this film. Uh, she saw a screening of it. <laughs> I One did of the see a few it. people. I did. Was it how close was it to? It was like the final version, right? Or almost the final yeah, version. Yeah, that, that was the final cut, I think. Yeah. No, it was. It didn't look like. Obviously, it didn't look like one main location, and it looked like you guys put a lot of money into it well, i was really shocked when you told us how much i appreciate that yeah i think um that was the goal we had a lot of people who i mean the good thing about la is there's so many really talented people that want to work and yeah. as long as you're not taking advantage of them or at least showing some gratitude you you can get some really beautiful stuff with a low budget That's now we, awesome. we say no budget like there's no budget but everybody was paid in They show up to bat. You know, you don't have to pay union rates to get uh, a good DP and a good crew. I mean, ideally, you would be able to, but, I mean, you know, it's so obvious that technology now, you can shoot something for nothing. Was that kind of, um, was acting what propelled you to get this started? Or did you want to, like, did you, did you set to flex your writing and producing and directing muscles not producing i'm a horrible producer (laughs) um but i've always um have been trying to write since i was young and it was like you know outside of trying to be an actor which is kind of like my first resistance of writing of like oh if i'm not 
disciplined enough to write or I'm too afraid to write. Well, I just act. And then you're like, oh, well, that's another nightmare trying to chase that dream as well. So it's like when I'm afraid of writing, I look towards acting. And when I'm afraid of acting, I look towards writing. And they both kind of inspire each other. So it's like I'm always running in a circle trying to stay motivated. But, um, yeah, so I've always been trying to write. And I had a friend who had a producer who wanted to do something. And I said, I got a concept. If I write something, would he be interested? So I pitched the idea to him. I think the next week I fleshed out just a little outline, pitched it to the producer. He loved the idea. I ran off. I wrote the script in a month. Um, I kind of, you know went astray with it, did something different because, you know, in the writing process, you, you're kind of finding it. And he wasn't as interested. And um, I decided to just do it on my own. I like it. Yeah. Do you find that now after this experience, you're creating more to just create instead of finding opportunities for your acting? Yeah. I mean, it's kind of fallen into that of... The film opened a lot of doors as far as other people wanting to work with me and get things done for themselves too. And uh, it's given me the opportunity to write um, for the sake of writing instead of just for the sake of acting. But I, you know, it's hard to stop myself from writing roles for myself, <laughs> which is great because then I can just write like a, and of course it's got to come from an organic place, but if there's like a great two scene role that I could play why not absolutely what were some of your biggest challenges working on something like this Oy, um, just seeing it through to the end okay. at every obstacle because at the beginning it's it's easy because it's exciting it's easy because it's like you're not looking at the top of the mountain you're looking at the step in front of you and you're like oh I could take that step that's easy and then you're like, yeah, I could do this next step too. I got this. And you keep doing that and you get all this momentum and then you eventually run out of breath and you're like, oh, Jesus. And you look up and you have a long way to go. And it's like once that excitement burns out, you you still got to finish the thing. And like I said, you know, taking as long as it took to see it through to the end because it's not like you can just, oh, the this is wrong, this is wrong. Let's throw money and hire somebody to fix it. It's like, no. I got to do it. You got to yeah. figure it out <laughs> to the point where pff, the sound designer is, is texting me at midnight saying, I need the, the sound. You have to send me all the elements. Right? And, and I've had three composers fall through on me. So I open GarageBand and I'm learning how to play the damn piano to score the movie at two in the morning. So That's you find so a way. It's so funny because Alexa and I were talking about this episode uh, with you on the way here. And we were talking about how we can really relate it to this experience yeah. of getting this underway. Yeah. Because Alexa and I approached it completely differently. Like, I'm very um, about learning each step thoroughly. And, like, I'm very cautious. And Alexa's like, just do it. And yeah. so it was, like, a yeah. nice balance of, like, yeah, she's like, really good do it. And I'm like, that. no, but look at the mountain. And she's and like, like, no, but climb you're it. You're like, slow down. <laughs> we, have these, we have these steps to take. And I'm like, I'm going. I'm going now. Catch up. Well, what were some obstacles you guys faced? I thought we were interviewing you. Yeah. I thought we were just having a conversation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> obstacles we faced? I think, like, the technical side of things. Like I mean, it, that got and... really easy real quick after we met right. Jason. Yeah. That <laughs> so... Hi, Jason. <laughs> yeah, that solved, a lot. that solved a lot of our issues, actually. But... Jason solved all our problems. Um yeah, because we were we started recording this in my closet, and we didn't we thought it sounded great. That was a that and then was we a hell came of a day. Here <laughs> and we were like, that didn't sound great at all. This is what great sounds yeah. like. Yeah, and it's Not it's also just like horn, working guys. out the kinks of like, like I think when we first like we recorded our first episode, like it was very awkward. Like we were just like didn't yeah. know how to just be. It takes so, a while to get comfortable, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, getting into a flow of things and then... And also, like you were saying, like, finding the longevity of, like, something. Yeah. Like, we, you know, how to sustain, you know, what we're working on. Because it's, like, in the beginning, you have all that excitement and you have all these ideas. And then it's, like, okay, how am I going to, you know, keep this going? Yeah, and then I think, for me, the next phase was, like, 
there's another great feeling about when it it feels like a job, mm-hmm. and not in like a bad way. When it's like, oh yeah, this is, oh this is my job, and mm-hmm. that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So there's there's like the satisfaction of that as well. Is that the the main highlight? Is everything you've learned? What are what have been the best parts? Yeah, I think um, just that thing of like once once a light in a room is on, you can find your way back to that room. So like finishing a thing is like, okay, now I know I can finish a thing that lights on. So, okay, in the next project, I know I can finish it. I know I can write a feature. I know I can produce it. I know I can deal with SAG. I can do this, X, Y, and Z. Mm-hmm. So you're you're just prepared and you can focus on the actual craft and the thing that you love about doing the thing. Yeah, that's a huge accomplishment, getting all that stuff under your belt and then having that knowledge to move forward with other projects. That's pretty that's pretty awesome. Yeah, it was uh, it was I mean, everything about it was really a great experience. Mm -hmm. And if anything, yeah, learning, learning. It's hard for me to, you know, be extremely proud of anything that I do just because that's kind of how I am. I'm a little hard on everything, but, you know. He's if I went really back in time, modest. James's default is modest. If I went back in time and looked at the film that I made, like before I wrote it, I would be like, "Whoa, well, damn, that's amazing, well done." But you know, when you go through the process, it's easy to be like, "I ah, should have done this. We could have done that. We should have done this." Well, you but learn, and you that learn. builds and your confidence, you, right? You, know, you keep moving. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing. I think that yeah, the light on is the confidence. I had like so many questions for you, and but you're so thorough at I answering know, he's like, them. Answer, and like, we don't just even have to like. Ask. <laughs> wow, I apologize. It's <laughs> terrible. Um, so I just wanted to say I uh, met James in uh, in our acting class. Yep. And I wanted to know. That was her first scene partner. She was my he he was she, my okay. she okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's late. Um, he was my first scene partner. He made me feel. Very welcome. I didn't mean to. <laughs> Did you want to alienate me? That was my goal. No. She Sorry you failed. <laughs> we did uh, Angels in America. No. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we yeah, did. Yeah, we did. We did Angels and then Danny and Deep Lucy. Mm-hmm. What made you fall in love with acting? Oh, I have no idea. Um, you moved all the way out here. Yeah. I don't know, really. Um, when I was young, I would always... I was a skateboarder, so we would always make, like, um, skateboard movies, and then kind of by default at the time with that, you would also film yourself doing stupid things, uh, jumping off buildings, doing pranks, that kind of thing. And uh, Did you ever get hurt? Well, that was what I was leading to, is every oh, okay. time I would break something, I couldn't skate, but we still wanted to shoot stuff. So eventually one day I was like, well, I was probably like 12 or 13, and I was like, we should make a movie today. So in that day... I think we were playing video games, and I was like, yeah, we should make a movie. So we wrote, shot, edited, and put uh, burned a DVD of a short film oh all in When one you were day. 13? Yeah. That's badass. I think the extent of my presentations when I was 13 were like poster boards and dioramas. I Yeah, we just did it for 13. fun, though. Yeah, so no. we went around to <laughs> everybody we <laughs> knew, and we were like, oh, look, and we had a DVD case for it. We printed out like a label. It was called The Interference. Ooh, I played wow. uh, Johnny McNabb. Was wow. My, I was a 13-year-old CIA agent, which, you know, was fun. And uh, we went around to everybody's house that we knew and made them watch it. Amazing. And it was, like, before anybody really knew how, like, nonlinear editing. So mm-hmm. when it would cut from a shot to me to a shot to me in a different outfit, like, everybody was, <laughs> like, shocked. <laughs> It was like a magic, magic trick that we played on them. <laughs> so we would always just try and like impress people with editing tricks like that. And um, I was I was horribly shy as a kid, very introverted. And I think like for some reason that inability to put myself out there made me want to do like the one thing where you have to put yourself out there. So I always, I think deep down thought like, I'll just, I'm going to make movies and then one day I'm going to put myself in movies. Yeah. And then eventually I was like, I'm going to go to L.A. and just I'm going to act. And I was like, all right, I'll just put myself out there. And then, of course, it comes all the way around and I'm like, ah, damn, it, I got to make my own movie to put myself in it. Yeah. 
So it was kind of the the unintentional plan. You were already prepped. Yeah. Almost. yeah. Your mindset yeah. was ready. Yeah. From 13. Yeah, I don't even remember what I was doing at 13. Like, probably nothing. What were we doing at 13? Where, what, what even? That's what like grade? seventh. That, no, that's uh, like eighth grade. Eighth grade? No. Eighth grade. But yeah, uh, I was definitely not making movies at 13. I absolutely was not. You saw uh, The Interference, Pam. I know I did. I want to see it. Yeah, it feels spectacular. Good, right? Highly recommend I feel like it. You're you should holding something it. back. I need to see this. Well, let's be honest. We did. Uh, <laughs> We did an entire trilogy. Whoa. Yeah, we did three, and then uh, we tried to make a fourth, and I think we kind of stopped production halfway through because we probably had to go to school. Riveting action sequences we with pretty, office chairs and— Pretty well-choreographed <laughs> fight scenes. That's—if you're doing that in your spare time, I mean, that, like, totally yeah. shows how passionate you are about it. Yeah, and that's kind of my thing is, like— um, I try to make myself enjoy the things that I should be doing. Like if I know what I want to be doing with my life, I try to make it so that I want to do the things that are practicing that thing as opposed to like, you know, enjoying my free time like most people and you know, watching sports or doing this. It's like, oh, I, I want to read this book because it's going to inspire me to write this thing. Just little tricks like that that I play yeah. myself. Well, creating your own work is inspiring, and I feel like it keeps you motivated to keep going creatively, at least for, I mean, I feel like both yeah. of us, we talk about this a lot, like, it just puts us in a better mood of being able to work on yeah. our own stuff and create our own work, so it definitely keeps yeah. keeps me balanced. Well, I mean, <laughs> that's one of the hobbies that you, like, do alone without, like... I mean, you do musicals in your bedroom. I mean, I, I'm not, this, this is, is like not the news second time. Yeah, this we, the... this is the second time. I, yeah, I choreograph dance numbers in my room on the daily. It's fine. My sister <laughs> just used to me. do that. <laughs> really? Um, to in sync music videos. That's probably would, uh, what I was doing. I would when do Genie in a Bottle <laughs> yeah. music videos. Oh, Genie in the Bottle! I love that song. I would pretend I was Christina Aguilera. The whole thing. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, they would. Do, they would wear like the the baggy tearaway pants and the in sync shirt with like the hat. And nice. they would choreograph to like bye bye bye. I would do that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you ever get to participate? I mean, I'm not saying I wouldn't have, but I was not allowed to. Aww. Because you weren't cool enough? I was not cool enough. So you would just watch? Yeah. Um, you know, I probably tried to get a few dance moves in there once in a while, but <laughs> I don't think it went well. So you stuck to the action films instead of the music yeah. videos. Yeah. You, sometimes you, when you start off, you just stick to one genre, really. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we'll get into musicals one day. I'm sure she would I be can happy help you to out. have you. Yeah. I can help you out. <laughs> She's going to back. Alaska to do a real one. I am. Not that yes. the ones in your room aren't real. Yeah, Pam. Wow, what a blow to my <laughs> ego, man. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, no. That's See, exciting. It is exciting. I'm very excited. It's going to be very cold, but it's going to be very exciting. I mean, I'm, I'll be dancing around a lot, so I guess. Yeah. How long are you there for? Um, Ten days. We do eight shows. Yes, eight wow. shows. Yeah. I was just a on lot. a plane this weekend, and there were people um, on the first leg heading to Alaska really? and from that yeah. plane. And uh, they were freaking out about the cold. They were not ready. It's like, I haven't really checked the temperature, but I feel like it's negative something. Like, it's pretty. Something pretty, unpleasant. Very unpleasant. I'm not going to be ready for it at all. It. You'll be inside most of the time, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Most of the time we'll be inside. So that's the, that's the good part. The mm -hmm. last time I went, I was there in April. And it was it was cold, but like not not crazy cold, so I'm not sure. Oh, what so you've been before. I have been before. Yes, nice. I've worked. I've actually worked for the company that I'm oh. working for again. Yeah. Nice. yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have any connections awesome. to Alaska, James? Uh, just you know, a desire to move <laughs> there. If all else fails, <laughs> uh, I want to do like some dog sled racing. I think. What's the What's the big competition called? Oh, uh, the Iditarod. Right? The Iditarod. Yeah. Is that really how it's pronounced? I don't know. That's what we I should told you up. it was called. I know because. It oh, sounds I've never super heard funny. of that. Yeah, it's a it's a big sledding race. Oh, I know I nothing know about dog called. sled racing, nor yeah, do I have any either. experience. But I have a dream to participate <laughs> oh, okay. in the race. Fully committed to, to making this life change. Yeah. Huh. 
That's you should that's pursue my that dream, James. You should really go. Oh, for that's that. kind of the backup plan. The backup plan's plan B. Yeah. Okay, Maybe I, I can you. do a movie about the race and then kind of come back. Both. Yeah. <laughs> or you could just work from there. Yeah. It'll be cold. I'll shoot on location. It'll. It's like my dream of moving to Scotland and working at a bookshop. Oh, yeah. You've told me that before. It's a very interesting dream. <laughs> a seaside bookshop. I, there's, you know, there's this um, Airbnb that went, I think it went viral recently, where you can um, rent this apartment that's right above a bookshop in like a sea town. Oh, that's cool. In Scotland. And I think it's like a low rental rate or something. Oh, I'm, you I'm really totally looked into butchering. This. <laughs> I'm totally you would butchering. You'd be bored it. out of your mind no, in three but days. You would <laughs> be on your way back. No, yeah. I'd get a lot of reading done. Yeah, because for, you'd run the bookshop in exchange for the um, no, housing. You would be bored out of your mind. Like I would nice love vacation. it. I would live that like, you know, life. Like a nice... I'd, I'd wear frocks and like I'd wear. <laughs> I would. Uh, Is have that what tea? they wear? <laughs> I don't know. It's fine. I'd go explore castles and I drink a lot of whiskey. What and are it'll frocks? be great. I use the word frock way too many times like because I was meeting my friends that have a baby and it's like I put, they put like this shirt over her shirt when she eats and I called it a frock, but oh. I feel like it's a dress. It's like a dress. Yeah, it's like a dress. I, I just really like so saying frock. you made frock. up the word frock? It's a real, no, it's a word, real word, James. Yeah. You're making up how to use it? Um, Probably. Possibly. It's entirely <laughs> likely. All right. I think it, it's a dress of some sort. Listen, it do you not has... support my life as um, no, frock I'm, wearing, I'm whiskey support- drinking, <laughs> book reading? Fully supporting it. Now? I'll come visit you. But then... <laughs> That's what I'm doing literally right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, currently. currently. She's currently wearing a frock, everyone. <laughs> just snorted. It's fine. <laughs> What's next for you, James? Um, we're just writing a lot right now. Um, acting when I can. Uh, and the great thing is, because I feel like I have a little bit of control now, which, you know, it's still just kind of an illusion, but at least there's something to do. You know, so I have a couple opportunities as far as a writer, which could lead to something in acting. But also, it, you know, stops me from sitting around and waiting for the phone to ring. Um, because I, j- I feel like I wouldn't... I wouldn't have stuck it out that long. I say that I probably would have, but I wouldn't be enjoying my life the way that I am. So a couple opportunities uh, for scripts that I'm writing right now. I just did a rewrite on a feature, and then I have a horror film that I'm writing right now that I'm hoping to. I love (laughs) horror films. I'm not going to lie. I like, I'm a big fan. Really? Oh my gosh, I love them. I don't have a fa- I well okay so I'm like Their notorious spooky movie. I'm notorious for picking like really <laughs> terrible like horror films to watch you like, like the like one B horror film yes I don't know why it's like my thing I just re- I really enjoy it. Mean, that's them. a lot of people's thing <laughs> yeah that's like um you know I'm hoping worst case I could do like a B horror movie I'll watch it even though I rarely yeah watch you don't horror like films. horror films I'll too. watch them if it's like a like a societal shifting okay. moment like I watched Get Out I watched Paranormal Activity yeah. I'll watch the like real spooky Skeleton ones and I'll watch Key. James's like movie alright I like, appreciate that you're so welcome I will absolutely watch it and support it I love it I love horror Thank films you. even though what's your favorite horror I film it. I was gonna say I think The Skeleton Key is really? probably my favorite I watched that one. That's like one I can watch over and over again. Yeah, I like. always like that title, but I haven't seen it. You haven't seen that? No. <gasps> okay, I think I think you would maybe like it. Okay. Yeah, I think you could. I think she could be. Have you seen it? If I can sleep I over, I'll Aww. watch it. Okay. <laughs> okay. I know that's the thing too. It's like you have to like time I it can't right. Can't sleep like, alone. Yeah, it is a little. Sometimes you I like really have get regrets. That scared, huh? Yeah. Can because I'll start yeah. hearing things in the middle of the night. Yeah. Yeah. I never have a problem falling asleep, but I will wake up at like three a.m. and like hate my life because I'm like anyway. what? Like, oh, it's weird. <laughs> you don't get spooked. Um, no, I mean, yeah, I, it's. I was never like a horror buff. Like, I'll go see a horror movie. I don't dislike them, but it's like, yeah, I'm just tense and stressed out the whole time, and I I don't need any more of that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll usually watch like the corner of the screen. 
just because what do you mean just so you're averting your eyes and you're just looking at the corner yeah because they're so good at drawing your eye right where they want to and then ah, yeah yeah, they're scary the music does a lot of it yes if you watch it without sound sometimes i'll turn the sound like if i know like a really scary part's coming up i'll turn the sound down because it's yeah just the the score just stresses me out it's the music the music (laughs) is definitely stressful what happens when you get tense i cramp up my neck Ooh, gets tight. Oh, my neck just cracked yeah. real good. <laughs> so I never was like a huge fan of horror movies. There's something that I liked. My sister, when I was younger, she loved horror movies. And that's probably why I didn't. Uh, because I was five and terrified of Pet Cemetery. Oh, no. Um, I didn't see it. No? No. Oh, that man. That I, just, that I don't remember much. I just remember that's that. That's scary. No, really? I don't think so. Oh, <laughs> but maybe I was like five. he was five. You were five. Yeah, we have to give you a pass on that. You were five. I've heard the movie's scary. All right. At five, you should be watching. I don't know, like Barney. I was just. I yeah. watched a lot of Barney too. Yeah. Not Barney can movies. be scary. Well, now like, it's now it's more funny. scary than it was when yeah, we were young. Yeah, kind of little scary. spooky. <laughs> a little yeah. spooky. A little spooky, like Barney. Yeah. So, I think. Maybe if it's all right with both of you, and I'm going to ask you this because you are a first guest and you get a veto if you're not ready for this question. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but I think it's time. Yes. You think so? I think it's time. <clears throat> he's going to go first if he's okay with it. He has to go first. I'm nervous. He didn't read the story. He has to go first. I know. Those are the he rules. He messed that up. Are you okay? Um, yeah. No, he... Re- <laughs> <laughs> oh, nailed the it. Wow, because the yeah, name of the show. Oh. Man, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> fine. He said <laughs> fine. fine. We don't... That's not... No. tired, a little hungry, oh, but most of Fine is not right. an answer. Have okay, you do listened to our show? Okay. Sad. I'll do it again. Okay, ready? <sighs> James. Mm-hmm. James Liddell. Yes. Are you okay? Eh, I'm all right. You're really <laughs> killing me with this. Why what? just all right? I didn't know. What's the right answer? You're never just okay. Here's the deal. Uh, yes, I'm you're right. never. Uh, it's okay, James. It's okay. I mess it up sometimes too, <laughs> she and she gets. I just mess almost yeah, every, yeah, every, every right. almost every time. All right. Here's the I thing. You're asking that, me a so. question. <laughs> yeah. I'm giving you an honest answer. Okay. So you can't tell me that I'm wrong. You gotta elaborate. Thank you, James. Actually, I'm gonna agree with him on this. Oh, this is that. the whole premise of our show. No big deal. I thought you wanted honesty. <laughs> try Elaborate. Ahead, I want. No, I'm not gonna do it again. again. You're gonna say the uh, same thing. Again. Are you okay? Uh, I'm all right. Elaborate. <laughs> <laughs> What's the format of the <laughs> answer supposed the, to be? You're supposed to like me, either be ahead. more than okay or less than okay, and you so elaborate. Give you like a plus minus on my okayness. Up, yeah. Give us a scale, a sliding scale, and give us a description. So five's okay. I don't know. Okay. I'm a seven. I'm a. I'm okay. <laughs> I'm a seven. Like I said, <laughs> read my intention here. Why? Why a seven? What's going on? Tell us. Um. Give us the tea. What's tea? No, I actually I feel good. Mm-hmm. All in all, I'm. I'm okay. That's how I would put it. I'm okay. Okay, we're going to just get back to you because, no. Yeah. Show me how it's done. <laughs> Alexa, I'm are practicing. you okay? I'm actually ready. I'm really ready this time, okay? I'm act- I thought about it. I'm prepared. Okay, here we go. We are going to come re- back to you. You're going to be really proud of my just answer. Just stay ready. James, it's okay. I won't pressure you that much. Thank she you. I will. She will. I will. But it's okay. Um, I am, Okay, so emotionally... I am, guys. This is gonna be too great. Much elaboration. Be great. <laughs> Emotionally, I am more than okay. Physically, I'm a little less than okay. Oh, she's not okay. Because, well, emotionally, I'm like I'm doing a show right now, so I'm like it's very, it's nice to be like working ten to six on something that I love. So that's awesome. Physically, though, I've been dancing for eight hours each day, and my feet are literally falling apart. So I have like blisters everywhere right now. It's really great. But that sounds dream. great. I'm living the dream, essentially. Yeah. But yes, physically falling apart, emotionally amazing. I think that's the goal. Yeah. That's I think, win. yeah. That yeah. sounds way more than okay. Yeah, it's more than okay. I mean, I just, I elaborated for you. Did You're you welcome. pay attention to that? Oh, I'm <laughs> so ready to answer. <laughs> Should I go or do you, yeah, you want to go now? Try me again. All right. Yeah, try right. Me. He's going to do the same I know, he's shit. Do the same thing. <laughs> go ahead. I don't want to. 
I'll oh, ask him. What if I'll I ask, ask him? you? Do I get to ask you? Ask, you? I'll ask him. Sure. Pamela, are you okay? No. So what's wrong? <laughs> She's really not okay. <laughs> I've noticed that she's really not being okay. Lately. No, she really. No, I, I'm being dead honest. Yeah, she really isn't. No, nah, she's a mess. <laughs> Do tell, elaborate, please. Um, <laughs> wow, guys, I pressure's feel, on. If I wasn't so, I don't know. Okay, I'd be feeling a little pressured. Um, no, I'm not okay because I just got back from Montana, and it was so nice. And post travel blues again. And also, like, just super busy, and there aren't enough hours in the day to get everything that I want to get done. And Like what? What do you want to get done? What do I want to get done? I want to get, you know, regular work, acting work, rehearsing, classes, gym, reading, making myself a better human just in general, and making time for my social life and family and all the things, and there's just not enough hours in the day. Mm. I'm trying. I would agree with that. I think you're doing pretty damn good. Yeah. Someone recently just said to me um, when I complained about not having enough hours in the day, she said, well, Beyonce has the same amount of hours that you do. What'd you do? Whoa. <laughs> that is a mic drop moment. Like, I mean, I was like, you're right. And I ha- I can't complain. You're like, I can't say so anything knowing You brought that, up Beyonce, so I can't say anything. <laughs> knowing that, um, I'm even less okay. So you didn't come up with like a sick comeback on the spot? Absolutely not. Right. Because I may have ad-libbed that story because I think she, I was, she wasn't okay. And I was like, you'll get him tomorrow. And she's like, but I have the same amount of hours. Oh, so you flipped it. You did the reverse. I just flipped it. You pretended that, that she had said that to I you. I probably could have done without saying that. I feel like you both fail at this, and I've clearly been the one. He hasn't the even chance. done it yet. Mean, Are man, you okay, on. James? Wait, hold on. I was going to drink a sip of water. <laughs> I wanted to be ready. My throat's really shot today. I'm very raspy. Everybody <clears throat> is raspy and sick and gross. It's fine. Hold on. I'm ready. You're going to mess it up again. I'm oh, not. I'm going to do it serious. Are you sure? Mm-hmm. Are you okay? Well, um, I've been having nightmares all week. <gasps> oh, that's the worst. I, I, having, oh, yeah, I hate having, having nightmares. Night- I had a nightmare last night. It was very like, uh, we're just going to open up now. Yeah, come on. It's very, Give like, us the tea. Uh, it's like kind of House of a Thousand Corpses uh, where me and my family were Another like, movie I didn't see. Being about to be murdered by this uh, satanic group of people. Um, so that was my night. That My sucks. shoulder's pretty banged up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. What else? <laughs> the nightmares all week. The, I think the the general theme of all my night. I don't really. I don't dream much. You know. I don't have nightmares ever. Two weeks now. Every night. You know what's weird? I don't dream a lot either. And I've been having not nightmares, but like really odd dreams. Just like why was that in my brain? Like what? <laughs> Like, I vividly remember having a dream where all I was doing was eating chapstick. And I don't know oh. why. It was like, it was a weird dream. Is like, that something why? you did as a kid? No. You've I never just eaten was chapstick, eating be chapstick. I, I mean, you thought about I, it? Okay, so the you only thing try? I could like relate this to <laughs> I got some is like, I think when, you know, like how like those lip glosses, I think it was like lip smackers or like something. Like, do you remember like being in like. Yeah, Dr. Pepper flavor. Yeah. I, I like would often put that me. on and like lick it <laughs> off my t- lips. That's the only like correlation I could have to that dream. Interesting. But like, yeah, just eating chapstick. Burt's Bees to be exact. Yeah. You guys are And I don't okay. use Burt's Bees chapstick. No. No, I don't even use birds. Because well, you eat it all. I <laughs> guess maybe I like. <laughs> I was like, I can't. I can't. <laughs> it's in the corner. Our I next guess. guest I is can't. ready He's over there. I have regrets about. Chat. I have regrets about the sharing that. Honestly, I'm never gonna live this one down. But or ah, you went there. Bite. Whatever. Okay. On that. So on, ca- right? on a count on a count of three, we're gonna save him. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Boom. Thanks so much for listening. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all the things. If for some reason you want to see more of us, you can follow us on Instagram at no one's okay. And a special thanks to Jordan Ross Weinhold, Sean Moore, Jason Crow, Claire Palmer, Jackson Palmer, Tiffany Hamoff, Shane Rings, James Liddell, and our podcast is recorded at Soundworks Studios. We, we can't, can't wait, wait to meet you. you. I mean...
Nothing. He's shaking his head over there. I see you. <laughs> it's ninth grade. It's ninth grade? It's eighth grade. Oh, Wait, are you sure? I was 14 in ninth grade. Yeah, I. Because I had my first kiss in 10th grade and that was 15. Why are you, you going to talk about that? <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Everyone, how old were you when you had your first no, kiss? <laughs> I was too. It really? was 10th grade. Yeah, I vividly remember. I didn't that. know that about you. Yeah. Anyway, that was a interesting. unnecessary segue. It, it, was, it was very unnecessary. I don't know why we, how James? we got there. Uh, 25. It was after the whole bit in the script. <laughs> naturally. Naturally. Yeah.